Good evening and thank you for joining us. My name is Brianna Juarez. I'm a third grade math teacher in San Antonio ISD. I also serve on the regional strategy team for San Antonio Rising and Solidarity for Equity or SA Rise. SA Rise is a community organizing group that works to build power for educational equity in San Antonio through meaningful dialogue, relationships, and collective action. Throughout the past year, we have been working with our community, our teachers, the Chief of Police, Chief Corriez, and the San Antonio Alliance to bring full transparency to the community about how SAISD PD will conduct itself under SB4. Today, we are celebrating this collaboration's efforts to support all students, including those that are undocumented. With collaborations like these, between committed organizations and district leaders, we hope to further push and strengthen SAISD's commitments made in the resolution passed on February of 2017 that states, among other things, the district will ensure students and guardians are directed to all available resources for assistance in understanding and exercising their rights under applicable laws. Following through with this commitment with the production of the Police and Community Handbook is an important first step in building and maintaining community trust there's still so much work to be done for the educational equity that our students deserve. SA Rise is not stopping here. We have district leaders and community members who will share a bit more about what this means for our district. Please join me in welcoming SAISD Board of Trustees President, Patty Radel. Thank you very much, Bree. Well, first of all, we thank um, we thank the media for showing up and being here with us. And we thank the others of you that are, are supporting and so concerned about this issue. This is a very important issue to SAISD. And we want to thank SA Rise for uh, pushing with the collaboration to uh, address this and come up with a, a strong booklet. We thank our own chief, uh, Claudia, for working with uh, SA Rise and uh, developing that booklet. Uh, this is a very important uh, issue to us. and. Out of everything that's in that booklet, I think the thing we want people to hear so much is that SB4 does not apply to school districts. And our chief has the ability to be able to tell his officers not to ask the status of uh, immigration or citizenship. And he will, and he does. And so that's very important for our families to understand that it is not the same relationship as it is with the San Antonio Police Department. School districts do not fall under SB4. And uh, we are grateful for the spirit of our own chief, the spirit of the community leaders who know that this is such an important issue. Uh, muchas gracias a SA Rise for su apoyo en este proyecto. Muchas gracias para su atención a nuestras familias nuestros estudiantes uh, para su trabajo con estas familias. Muchísimas gracias. Um, and I want to go ahead and, uh, am I introducing you, Pedro? So um, I am also so grateful that we have a superintendent who has experienced the challenges of immigration and knows what the challenges of immigration can do to our families, uh, understands the whole culture uh, that comes to our families of fear when they are already running from fear, many of them, and to be in such a situation where uh, life can get worse if we don't have uh, protections that keep our, our children on track for their uh, educational opportunities. So, Superintendent Martinez. Good afternoon, everyone. And so, first of all, as somebody born in Mexico, uh, that came to this country when I was uh, turning six years old. I know firsthand uh, the challenges that our immigrant families face. And, you know, one of the things that I'm very proud of is not only our board who has taken leadership on this issue, but also our chief. And it is just the beginning. I mean, I think we want to be clear with that, that first of all, we are open to learning. We're open to, you know, this is not our expertise. In fact, I will say right now, we want the help. We want experts to be able to come. Um, our goal is to open up our buildings and to ensure that parents have feel that not only that their children are safe, but that they're safe. And that they can gain knowledge about how to address these very challenging issues. Um, I will say this, we're not in a very friendly state when it comes to immigrants. And I think it's very sad. 
Uh, I'm hopeful over time that that might change, but the reality right now, it is not, it is not a friendly state towards immigrants. And so for us, um, I, I want our district to take a leadership role, um, but I will tell you, the one thing that I also would ask the community is, is not only look at this issue around immigration rights and, and you know, what's happening with ICE and, and all those activities, I also want, you, want us to be looking at the bigger picture of making sure these children get an education. So whenever I talk to any of our students that are in this situation, the first thing I let them know is that you have to graduate from high school and you have to go to college. Because no matter what happens, whether, you know, and I'm a big uh, proponent of getting a fix for DACA, I think it's, it's shameful that, that that hasn't been addressed. But what we can, and, and you know, my wife and I, we both personally contribute to uh, different organizations that are helping DACA students. We do it in our own personal life. Um, we need to make sure that our students know that they cannot give up. Um, my biggest fear, besides you know what's happening with, with ICE and other activities, is that many of our children, they lose hope. Um, I'll give you an example. So you know we have students right now that are not sure whether to fill out, fill out financial aid forms. You know, last year, we had a rec uh, record number, before the election, a record number of students that were filling out alternative financial aid forms as part of DACA. Now they're worried. And so we're having our counselors put on, put on an event specifically for students that, you know, and then we open it to everybody, but it's sort of our dreamer event around having children uh, have the information. There's universities that will give full ride scholarships. There are local institutions now that can help our children. And so the one thing I ask of the community is help us to ensure these children do not lose any hope. Because regardless of what happens with immigration laws, if they have graduated from high school, if they go to college, nobody can take that away from them. Um, so again, um, I want to thank our board president, and I'm going to ask Ms. Uh, Chief Carroll now to come up. He is an amazing leader. He's been in our district, I think, just a little bit over a year now. He has completely changed the culture of our police department. You know, one of the things I asked of him is I wanted our police department to be seen as individuals that were not only role models for our children, that were protectors of our children's safety. And I think this work, which is just the beginning, is also a step in the right direction to know that, uh, the, you know, I want them to see our police department as being on their side, uh, not having to fear for them for what could happen uh, with current immigration issues. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank S.A. Rice. I personally thank you for your leadership and uh, and anyone else who contributed to this handbook. Uh, like, like the uh, superintendent stated, you know, it is the first step of going forward in a positive manner. Uh, and we are open to any other input that anyone else may have to improve this handbook. Uh, I really appreciate the compassion that S.A. Rice and, and others have and and humanity, uh, and I really, really am compassionate about it and their hard work uh, in regards to uh, uh, being the voice for others, others who, who can't or, or don't have that voice, and and mainly being the voice for uh, and doing the right thing for the common good of our immigration families that we have. Uh, I, I really do. I am very compassionate of what we do as police. Uh, here's our philosophy, real quick, like so everyone can know. Uh, we're here to shine that positive light on everyone we come in contact with. You know, we would treat everyone with respect, with dignity, with protection, and most importantly as a human being, and not based on what they look like or what they wear. That is our philosophy, and we want to be that shiny light uh, and that resource that our anyone can come to us and speak to us without the fear of being deported. Uh, you know, our, our Immigrant families here play a big role uh, in our community itself. Uh, again, and once again, we like to be that, that resource for them when they're in need. Uh, and, and I encourage everyone uh, to ask the question, because I keep on asking me the que same question is, uh, what are we doing or what can we do for the non-documented people uh, to make their lives better and hopefully get documented? What are we actually doing? We as police, I assure you, are doing our best to maintain safe and secure environments for all. For all. And I leave you with, if you see something, say something. Thank you. Our next speaker is an SAISD graduate, Maria Rocha. As we 
gather today, we have to remind ourselves how far we have come as a district, as a community, and as a city. My educational years at SEISD include, include attending Wilson Elementary, Whittier Middle School, and graduate from Edison High School in 2005. Yes, I recall derogatory terms used towards me and others, words like wetback, mojado, and illegal. Aside from the negative, I also recall the positive and the immense support from teachers, counselors, and administrators who made me feel safe. Safety is a key element we must provide our students on a daily basis. How can one function fearful? Fear about themselves, but most importantly, will I go home to my family today? That was a question I often asked myself. Will I be able to go home to my parents knowing that they drive without a state-issued ID, even up to this day? The work you as allies and advocates started with the urgency of now. The work of SA RISE initiated with past and present educators doing exactly what they stand for, San Antonians rising in solidarity, solidarity for equity, especially under our current political climate. The handbook brought forth a sense of security our undocumented students deserve. We need to be ensured and promised that our staff members are well equipped and trained to take action. This includes mandatory trainings and information about the opportunity to furthering their education our most vulnerable students have in our state of Texas. I'm a living product of that. I graduated with my bachelor's in 2012 from UTSA and I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in educational leadership. I am fortunate to have obtained DACA, but not everyone was able to obtain such a privilege due to certain requirements or simply because they feared applying. Our victory speaks for many, even at this first step. Let us all continue to advocate for all students and prove to them que si se puede. Sabemos que este paso es el primer paso de muchos que están por venir. Nuestra comunidad se merece esto y más, sabiendo el temor que nos enfrentamos día a día. Gracias a ese RISE, al distrito y a nuestra comunidad por reconocer esta gran necesidad y este gran triunfo. Gracias. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gerardo Villegas. I am um, a product of SAIC as well. I'm an immigrant um, and I'm currently a teacher in this district. Uh, so I've been proud of this district proudly since 2001 when I came uh, to, United, to the United States and enrolled at Nelson Elementary uh, until I graduated from Fox Egg High School in 2012. Um, SAIC, as far as I can remember, was my home safe haven uh, throughout those years. Um, it is where I felt welcome and continue to be inspired every single day by my own students today. Um, the conversation that we are having today is extremely important because um, we serve as that community whether we want to admit it or not. And um, this community has come under fire by many policies, not just as before, but federal policies that are going to have even further effects down the line. So it's going to take for us, uh, through our own devices, to champion the students and families in our immigrant communities, so I think of like myself, uh, even though you know I feel like I have some kind of uh, power within just having some kind of an education and being in the classroom and being a role model to my students, I now have the, that responsibility through my own device to speak, and that's why I'm here today. Um, immigrants are at the heart of some of our most precious precious schools, and that is to like completely uh, a fact. Um, Immigrants, um, they, uh, oh, I'm sorry. They're, I'm happy that these guidelines are being set and I challenge uh, you guys to continue to do more. Uh, I can attest to how the advocacy of my teachers and the schools attribute to the success of students like myself. Uh, your words, your actions and inactions have so much power. And I'll forever feel committed to this district. Um, here is where countless of teachers advocated for me knowing my own situation and I was pushed to seek opportunities beyond the, what limit, limits us as immigrants. Because of them, I stand here today and uh, teaching math. So I'm, uh, estoy muy orgulloso de este distrito y de todo lo que está haciendo para proteger a esta comunidad de inmigrantes. Uh, espero que esto no va a ser el principio de lo que vamos a hacer y lo que vamos a decir. 
como uh, maestro yo en este distrito me siento con la responsabilidad de ser liberador de las voces de mis estudiantes y lo primero que, que yo uh, hago como maestro es bu uh, buscar maneras de que mis estudiantes se sientan bien en mi clase y esta es una de las maneras de, de, de que podemos hacer eso. words from SA Rise Regional Strategy Team member Mary Hokia. Thank you to all of our speakers whose powerful words remind us of the importance of continuing to develop trust between district police and the community. Thank you to SAISD for the commitment to all students and families. This work does not end here. Supporting all students in SAISD is a priority and it takes all of us working together and offering solutions. Let's continue working together to create ever better educational outcomes for our students. Muchas gracias a todos que hablaron hoy día. Sus palabras poderosas nos recuerdan de la importancia de seguir desarrollando vínculos entre el distrito, la policía del distrito y la comunidad. Muchas gracias a CIAC para su compromiso a, para, a todos los estudiantes y las familias. Este trabajo no, no termina aquí. Apoyando a todos los estudiantes del distrito de SISD es una prioridad y toma a todos nosotros unidos, trabajando juntos y ofreciendo soluciones. Seguiremos trabajando juntos para crear aún mejor soluciones de, para la educación y para nuestros niños. Por favor de juntarse con nosotros en la siguiente conversación comunitaria el 18 de abril a las 6 p.m. Please join us at our next community conversation April 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you so much for coming today.